the organization has received a very important letter from Tony uh, Masarosic, and the chairman, and the letters from the Republic of Poland, the subcommittee for the air disaster reinvestigation. Esteemed families of those who have perished in aviation disasters. Attacks upon aircrafts carrying passengers are crimes which the world has been addressing since the 1970s of the 20th century. In most cases, they have the character of threats, attacks upon a specific people or countries that were to be intimidated by such an act. From today's perspective of imperialist aggression by the Russian Federation, the Smolensk crime of April 10, 2010 has a particular significance. The goal was the elimination of the President of the Republic of Poland, as well as the Polish military and political elite in an effort to allow Russia to continue its energy and political domination among European countries. The aircraft was destroyed by thermobaric explosion, which first destroyed the left wing and then the center killing the Polish delegation, heading to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the Katyn genocide. The crime was accompanied by one of the largest disinformation campaigns aiming to blame blame on those who had been killed. The Russian side and its propaganda and false MAK reports blames the Polish pilots for the tragedy. They blame the commander of the Air Force and President Lech Lekosinski himself. The terms of the Chicago Conventions were forced upon the investigation, giving Russia all the evidence and empowerment to investigate this catastrophe. Notwithstanding that this was a military aircraft not subject to these stipulations, Evidence was destroyed, hidden, and falsified, including the sound and parameter recorders, as well as parts of the aircraft, which bore traces of the explosion and the explosive materials. The most terrifying, however, was the Russian conduct with the, with the corpses of the fallen, whose injuries and location at the site were likely indicative of the explosion. All these actions had one aim, high, hide the perpetrator's goal of the attack, and deter uncovering the truth. A special role was played by the Russian Special Services, which from the very start, by its agents, controlled the preparation of the attack, directed the flight from headquarters in Moscow, destroyed the aircraft, falsified investigation, and importantly, spread false media propaganda. In light of the aforementioned, I thank the families of those who perished in aviation disasters and organizers of today's conference and the media for the possibility to present the truth about the Smolensk crime. The report of the commission investigating the Smolensk crime of April 10, 2010, which encompasses all 338 pages of evidence, 10,000 pages of attachments, was published on April 11th of this year. The English version is available today on the website of the Ministry of National Defense of the Republic of Poland. Let's meet some the family members from Smolensk. Good afternoon. My name is Maria Szoner-Pinienda. I'm the president of the Libra Institute. It is an American NGO dedicated to fostering better understanding and uh, closer relationship between Poland and the United States. I would like to thank Ms. Dunham and Mr. Jimkiewicz and the National Air Disaster Foundation for inviting the Polish delegation to present the Smolensk case today. I would like to refer to the statement. Today, Georgia, tomorrow, Ukraine, next, the Baltic states, and then the time will come for my country, Poland. This prophetic statement was made by President of Poland, Lech Kaczyński, during the rally in Georgia in August 2008, at the time when Russian tanks were rolling towards the BBC by organizing and leading a delegation of the European leaders to Tbilisi at the time when Russia invaded Georgia. President Kaczynski 
called the attention of the entire world to this aggression. As a result of his decisive intervention, Russia stopped the assault on its small neighbor. President Kaczynski was severely criticized for his unequivocal stand in defense of Georgia. He was criticized at home and abroad. The Russian propaganda machine, supported by the German-led Western media, portrayed President Kaczynski as an irresponsible radical who puts Europe on the collision course with Russia and effectively discredited uh, President Kaczynski in the West. Less than two years after the Georgia crisis, the official delegation of the Republic of Poland with President Kaczynski and the First Lady on board flew to Smolensk near the Katyn Forest in Russia to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the Katyn massacre and pay respect to the Polish victims of the mass extermination operation led by NKVD in the spring of 1940. The delegation consisted of 20 top officials and preeminent leaders of the Polish society, 18 members of the Polish parliament, 14 representatives of the families of the Katyn victims, 10 top generals of the Polish armed forces, nine clergy, eight representatives of the Chancellery of the President, eight representatives of the Government Protection Bureau, and eight members of the crew. They all perished when the Polish Air Force One disintegrated in the air over the Smolensk airport on April 10, 2010. The Russians immediately took full control of the wreckage site and began the massive worldwide disinformation operation. Within the minutes, all Western media pushed the pilot error scenario as the only feasible reason for this disaster. Confusing the public about the legal status of the Polish Air Force One, Russia forced Poland to conduct the investigation just under an expert team to the ICAO Convention. This move assured that the investigation was conducted outside of any framework of law and gave Russia a free hand in the entire investigation process. The body of President Lech Kaczynski and most of the victims were desecrated in Russia. All the evidence was tampered with and key evidence was destroyed. Poland never received the wreckage of the plane and the black boxes. In January 2011, Russia announced the, that the Polish Air Force One went down in Smolensk due to pilot error. The Russian narrative was brutal. It stated that the incompetent pilot acted under the pressure of the drunk commander-in-chief of the Polish Air Force who was in the cockpit at the time of the crash, forcing the pilots to land at any cost. This general, in turn, followed the order of the irresponsible President Kaczynski. The Russian conclusions not only blamed Poland for causing the Smolensk disaster, but also aimed at ridiculing and discrediting in the eyes of the international public opinion the office of the President of Poland, the function of the General of the Polish Army and the Polish pilot, the key symbolic prerogatives of the statehood of Poland. In Smolensk, Poland lost almost the entire central command of the Polish Armed Forces, including three top NATO generals. The Chief of Command of General Staff of the Polish Armed Forces, General Franciszek Gongor, was next in line to assume the command of NATO forces in Europe. The Russians not only killed the top command of the Polish Armed Forces, which were fully integrated into NATO by then, but also discredited them and desecrated the memory of the best Polish generals. 
The Commander-in-Chief of the Polish Air Force, General Andrzej Błasik, was the recipient of the Legion of Merit of the United States of America for exceptionally meritorious services as Commander of Polish Air Force between 2007 and 2009. He was awarded this distinction by the U.S. Secretary of Air Force and the U.S. Secretary of Defense shortly before his tragic death in Smolensk. In 2015, the Law and Justice Party of late President Kaczynski won the majority in the Polish Parliament and set up the Polish Commission for Investigation of the Smolensk Disaster. The Commission concluded that the Polish Air Force One disintegrated in the air due to explosions in the left wing and in the fuselage. Explosions were placed in the internal structure of the airplane. The access to these internal parts was possible during the overhaul performed at the Aviacor plant in Samara, Russia, short, shortly before the Smolensk disaster. The Aviacor plant was owned by the Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska, a friend of Vladimir Putin. The Commission announced uh, its final results uh, on April 11, just over two weeks ago.